Hey everybody, it is Mike Petralia Trags back with the latest installment of the Jungle Roar podcast. On Thursday afternoon, before a three-day Labor Day weekend break for the Bengals and pretty much every other NFL team before the Labor Day weekend, Joe Burrow was back on the practice facility fields right across from Paycor Stadium. It was only a shorts and shells workout for the Bengals before they head out on that three-day break. Uh, But it was important to note that Burrow was back out there for a second straight day, tossing the ball around, doing his normal pre-practice routine with Will Greer, the new uh, practice squad quarterback, and of course backup quarterback Jake Browning. They were all tossing the ball around on Wednesday. They did so again on Thursday afternoon. Then Joe Burrow went into the practice mode. He tossed uh, the ball around to some wide receivers, including Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and, of course, Tyler Boyd, and, again, uh, Charlie Jones, the rookie who caught a really nice pass, a long bomb of 50 yards down the sideline from Burrow on Wednesday afternoon, much to the amazement of one T. Higgins, who said, ooh, Joe Shiesty is back, and that kind of let everybody else know uh, that the – starting quarterback for the Bengals, was on the road to full recovery and should be set uh, for a return on September 10th uh, in Cleveland at First Energy Stadium for the 2023 season opener. But again, it is important to note that we in the uh, reporters uh, group do not get a chance to look at the entire 90-minute practice or two-hour practice, however long they decide to go. We just get a glimpse now that the season is getting ready to ramp up here. We get a look for about 20 to 30 minutes of their stretching activities, them tossing the ball around, some individual drills. Once team drills begin, we don't really get a chance to stick around and watch that, which is important because uh, Joe Burrow has not really been, according to Brian Callahan after Thursday's practice, hasn't really been fully involved in the team periods. He's certainly been working with the wide receivers, calling plays in the huddle, seven on seven, but with no uh, defensive line there in front of him. Obviously, the team playing it very close to the vest, playing it cautious as they should. No surprise there. And uh, Zach Taylor said on Thursday afternoon before heading out to practice, there's been a plan in place really the whole time for the return of Joe Burrow. I thought he looked good. You know, it was good to get him out there. Um, you know, it certainly energizes the team when you get a chance to get your starting quarterback back out there. So I thought he looked good. Yeah, we're just taking it day to day with with how we're going to integrate them in there. I don't think there's a defined checklist that we need to see. Um, again, it was just good to get them out there with the team and call and plays in the huddle and all that good stuff at practice. So I think that was encouraging for everybody. Was it key to get them in there? We've had a timeline that we've we've operated by for a while now, and it's just part of that timeline. I, I think he's done a great job making sure that he's ready to go when when his number was called. Now, Brian Callahan, the offensive coordinator basically echoed what Zach Taylor said on Thursday, saying that you could tell that the energy was up for the whole team, not just the offense, but the entire team. There was a different energy with Joe Burrow back on the field, pretty much running the offense and really competing against uh, the Bengal defense, which should be very good this year, of course. Mike Thomas said after Wednesday's practice, he didn't recall a single pass from Burrow hitting the turf during his first uh, practice back since uh, Uh, injuring his right calf and you know Brian Callahan did say on Thursday afternoon that Joe Burrow has been more vocal this year with especially the offensive group the wide receivers and the running backs he is taking more ownership in the offense and Callahan says that's a really big deal he's 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 been way more vocal this year in general from the start of the offseason program until through training camp, you know, he's still involved in all that stuff. He coaches pretty actively now, um, you know, probably more than he ever has. He is not afraid to speak up. Now, it's not like he's talking the whole time. He's he's very selective with, as you guys know, with what he says and how he says it. And so it lands with maximum impact when he has something to say. Um, and the quarterback meetings, he's been the same guy the whole time. He's he's fun to listen to, and he's got a lot of opinions about how things uh, should look. And, how the, and we listen to him, and that's kind of what makes, I think, our setup pretty unique. So uh, I've not seen – I've seen a growth in the meeting room process from him this year in general. Um, that's been pretty cool. How exciting is that to kind of see that growth? Oh, it's great. I mean, as a coach, it's, you know, I think as a coach, you're, you're always hoping to be able to just sort of fade back and let the players take control of it all. And that's, you know, 
when you got a good team, it's usually what happens. And um, you know, he's he's gotten to that point in his career where uh, he's very confident in what we're doing, how we're doing it, and his role in it. And that's that's pretty fun for a coach to be able to, to do that. Callahan also indicated that he has seen Joe Burrow make all of the plays and all of the throws that he needs to make over the last two days to give him an indication that he is well on his way to returning to full game mode next week when the Bengals really ramp up practice. They'll have a probably a full day of padded practice, at least on Wednesday. They could even have that on Monday afternoon. That's still to be determined, but we'll see on that. The Bengals next week will practice on Monday, Labor Day, then Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, normal practice routine, heading up to the season opener on Monday in Cleveland. Just really those those things that that idea of throwing a ball on time, throwing a ball live to receivers again. Just it's been a couple of weeks, you know, since you've been in pads on the football field and normal spacing and normal speeds and all that. So to to throw those balls, to get that timing down, um, to get back comfortable, seeing a defense and playing fast and all that is is probably a huge part of it. So um, obviously the next step is is you know getting those live intense team periods that. Um, you know, you feel all of it together. So it's been a it's been a good start. All you can tell he's he's in shape and his arms in shape and his timing's good. All those things still didn't seem to be affected at all. So that was a positive thing. You never know until you get out there what, what it's gonna look like. So um, that part was was great. He looked good the last two days and it's nice to have him out there. Zach Taylor before heading out to practice on Thursday afternoon also had some high praise for some of the guys behind the scenes that do heavy work and heavy lifting, so to speak, on Joe Burrow's conditioning and really the rest of the players who are also rehabbing injuries. Someone like Joseph Osai with the high ankle sprain suffered last Saturday in Washington. Strength and conditioning coordinator Joey Bose, Nick Cosgrave, and Matt Summers on the training staff. He says all of those people, and along with their uh, staff as well that work under them, have done a phenomenal job getting this Bengal team ready physically uh, for the 2023 season. And obviously, they've been doing a lot of work behind the scenes. Nobody sees uh, in terms of getting the most important player on the in the organization ready for the September 10th opener in Cleveland. I'd give praise to Joey Bose and Matt Summers and Nick Cosgray and the, the whole training staff and the whole strength staff. I think... Um, our players have a lot of confidence in those guys. And, and again, that's a key thing is those two departments working together, you know, with great chemistry and great communication. And that's what we have from Matt Summers and his staff and Joey Bose and his staff. And so they're, they're both big pieces of the puzzle of rehabbing players like Joe and um, very, very confident in both their abilities. And they've just done a great job, not only with Joe, but, but several other players we've had over the years. And so, um, that's part of one of the relationships you don't get a chance to see behind this. Obviously, you guys don't get the chance to see that, but um, I think it's it's critical to highlight that and the confidence our players have in, in those two departments led by those two men. Well, that'll be it for this episode of the Jungle Roar podcast. We'll be back with you on Labor Day when the Bengals again return to the practice field. They'll have the next three days off and then return on Monday, have Tuesday off. Then it's the normal routine, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And again, the season opener, September 10th in Cleveland. Be sure to follow me on X, or formerly known as Twitter.com, at Trags, T-R-A-G-S. Of course, we'll have you covered all season long on CLNSmedia.com. And be sure to click and subscribe at the link below if you're watching this on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Jungle Roar Pod. Until Monday, have a great weekend, and thanks for watching this episode of the Jungle Roar podcast.